let's start by looking at the anatomy of a typeface and how we measure a type. So the first thing that we can do is we can use a measurement that we're all familiar with, which is the font size. And this is measured from the top of a capital letter down to the bottom of the lowest letter, plus a little bit. There's a little bit of leeway added on, as you can see. We can also measure other aspects of the type. So, for example, we can look at the height of a capital letter, and that's called the cap height. We can then also look at the height of the lowercase letters. On this diagram, that's between the green and the red lines. And as you can see, that's the height of a lowercase x. So that's called the x height. Anything that goes above that green line, so higher than a lowercase x, is called an ascender. Anything that goes below the, the baseline, the red line, is called a descender. Now in print design, the font size is measured in what are called points. You've also heard of point sizes. And one point is 172nd of an inch, and that comes from the old days of printing. All of these four X's are all the same point size. They're all the same font size. But you can see the size of the X, the height of the X, is different in every case. And that's down to the way the type is designed. The practical result of that is that a font with a tall X height looks bigger, even if the font size is the same. So you get two fonts with different X heights. They'll look different sizes. Leading is the distance between two adjacent lines of type. So technically between the base lines of those lines of type, as you can see here. If the leading is the same as the font size, the font is said to be set solid. Now normally, the leading will be slightly more than the font size. And you need a little bit of extra leading in order to make the type more readable. And the longer the length of the lines, or the longer the measure, as it's called, the more leading you need in order to make the type readable. Let's now look at different classes of fonts. We've got three different fonts here. The one on the left is a serif font. And you can see in the corners of the, the legs of the characters are these sort of wedge-shaped little extra bits, and they're called serifs. And you can see the one in the middle is called a slab serif, and that has square serifs rather than wedge-shaped ones. And then the sans serif character on the right has no serifs at all. And the serifs are there to, to well, some people say that it makes the characters easier to read. It also makes the characters have a different kind of feel to them. And what you want to do is match the font style that you're using to the aim of the layout. Do you want the layout to look authoritative? So if you do, you might want to use Times New Roman, which is the top series of words there. So in that case, Sirius is the kind of character of that type. You look at the centre line, that's a typeface called Helvetica Neuer, particularly in this uh, very light weight that we've got here. It's more associated with kind of style and design. And then the bottom one is a typeface called Hobo. And that's really a typeface that's more... Um, friendly, human, playful. So if you're trying to get that kind of feeling into your layout, that's the kind of typeface you should use. Another thing that gives a, a different kind of character to a layout is the alignment. So we've got three different examples here. On the left we've got what's called left aligned or ragged right. The right hand side of the column is, is a ragged line. And this is kind of kind of an informal or creative kind of feel to it. The one in the middle is justified, so the right-hand side is now a, a vertical line. And that has a sort of more serious, more authoritative style, but it could also look boring. So you have to choose with care which you prefer. Then the one on the right, the lines of text are right aligned, so the right-hand side is vertical, the left-hand side is ragged. That can look good for things like captions or headings sometimes but you've got to be careful because it's very difficult to read large amounts of copy which are set right aligned because it's very difficult for the eye to find the starts of the lines. Different fonts take up a different amount of space. On the left here we have Times New Roman, on the right 
Helvetica Neue, both of them in the same size, but you can see the Helvetica takes up more space than the Times Roman. So that's something you need to factor in when you're designing a layout. And something else that we've got control over is the spacing between the characters. So if you look at the word Coventry here, around the O, the V and the E, there's quite a lot of space in between those characters. Whereas you look at the TR and Y, there's very little space. The version of the word below, those spaces have been tightened up so that they're consistent all the way along the word. And that process is called kerning. 